Hi folks, thank you for checking out my video. Today I'm going to do a walkthrough on the ignition system of a typical vehicle and explain each of the components, what it does and how it feeds into each other to make your vehicle start, as well as walk you through the circuitry behind the ignition system. I realized that this is a very confusing topic for a lot of people. It took me a while to also figure this out as well and uh, put up this module for you so that you can have a good understanding of the system. This will also be helpful as well if you're having problem starting your vehicle. At least you now can identify the different components that go into it and hopefully you can use this video to try to pinpoint which components might not be working when your vehicle is not starting. So I'm going to highlight six major components to this whole system, including the flywheel, all right? The first component is the battery. You need the battery to get your engine starting. Now, your battery is very important because without the battery, you won't have not only electricity to start the engine, but also electricity to, to power all the accessories like your lights, your AC system, and so forth. So that's why when your battery is dead, your engine won't start. Your vehicle battery operates on 12 volts, usually 12 or more, but less than 14 volts between that range. The battery is designed to give out a tremendous amount of amperage. Now, this is not a car battery. This is too small, but for this demonstration, it will work. Your battery usually has over 500 amps. Working off 12 volts, uh, it needs lots of amperage to start the vehicle as well as to provide power to the accessories of your vehicle. So the second key component is the starter. Now, your vehicle will not start without the starter. And that's because your vehicle engine is separate from the starter. The engine works off fuel, uh, works off the, the gasoline that you put in your car and it will not start on its own without the starter. Now you'll notice the starter has various important uh, components attached to it. So the first is a solenoid or a relay. At the bottom here, you have the electric motor. And for those of you who are interested in how electric motor works, I do have a video on that. Uh, I will post it uh, under the description for you. So the electric motor is ignited by the solenoid. Once the electric motor gets going, once power is supplied to the electric motor component of the starter here, the shaft of the electric motor will then turn on. It will spin and attached to the shaft is the pinion gear. The pinion gear is then engaged with the teeth of the flywheel. The flywheel is the piece that connects the starter to the engine block to the combustion chambers, to the pistons that will enable for the engine to combust and work on its own. The flywheel is uh, connected to the crankshaft of the engine. The flywheel will then start to spin to get the engine to combust. Once the engine combusts, then the gear here will disengage from the flywheel. The engine then will work off the gasoline that's being supplied to the combustion chamber for the combustion to take place. Once you hear that engine roaring, the starter is no longer needed, right? And that's why when you turn on the ignition key here, it's only temporary, really quickly, right? You turn it on, you hear the engine started, you let go of the key and it will go back to the starting place. So that is the core purpose of the starter to get the engine going and then disengage. So now all of this is not in order. I'm just explaining the various key components uh, to the starting system. Okay, so the next piece here is the safety gear. When you turn on your ignition, typically when you start your car, your engine is always on park, you know, or neutral but it's never on drive or reverse. When your engine is on park, your vehicle is not in gear. The transmission gear is not connected to the wheels of your vehicle. Only when you have it on drive, once the engine is started, the gear kicks in and you're able to drive the car, right? But when you're starting, it's important that you have this in the park position. So uh, electrically, when you have this in the park position, the electrical path is close which means there's a connection. Now electricity can go through from the battery and to the starter for the starter to get going. So next is the ignition key. The ignition key has many levels. You can have it to accessory, to start, 
and then you can crank it just momentary like that to get the engine going. In this key here, there's a spring. When you start your vehicle and you let your fingers go, it'll spring backward to prevent the motor to continue to be engaged in the flywheel. You don't want this to be engaged with the flywheel while the engine is going because you can damage the starter. In addition to an ignition key, there is a relay. The relay is also another important component uh, to the starting system because it allows you to install a safety mechanism when starting your vehicle, right? So it is electrically connected to the safety switch here. In this case, for example, your vehicle will not start when you have it on drive or reverse. It will only start when you have this, the gear switched to park or neutral. So this relay plays that very important role. Here's what this relay looks like. It's a four pin relay. The two pins here are the base, which you provide uh, electricity from the battery. Inside the relay is a solenoid. When you provide electricity, when you connect it to the battery, the coil here, there's a bunch of rolled up coil here, like so, inside will produce magnetic field strong enough to attract, to pull the metal piece towards it. The metal piece, or the top part here, when this thing comes down here, it'll touch the bottom like so. Once it touches, the switch is closed, which means that electricity can pass through to whatever load that you are connecting it to. The purpose is to enable you to control electricity using a small device like so, that would allow a larger power to the starter motor here. So with that, let's go into the wiring process. So how is, is this thing wired? So let's start with the battery. You see the positive terminal here and the negative terminal here. And you'll see there are two lines coming off the positive terminal. You see the bigger wire here. The bigger wire is designed so that it can carry more amps because the starter needs quite a bit of amps to get started. In a typical vehicle, to start the motor without connecting to a load, here I'm able, this battery has 12 amps, so I'm able to make it run off 12 amps. But if you are going to start a vehicle, the amperage needed to get the vehicle going is typically 125 amps to 400, depending on the weather. If you are trying to start your car in a cold day, it's gonna take a lot, probably 400 amps or more. And that's why the wires are huge. So here, the positive wire, the bigger one, comes down to, to the solenoid, the terminal here at the top. At this point, the terminal inside the solenoid is open. That means it's not connected. There's no electrical path from the solenoid to the motor. In order for electricity to go to the motor, you have to excite the solenoid. You have to provide electricity to the solenoid. And that is where the second wire comes in. So on the second small wire here, it's also connected to the positive battery. Uh, the second wire is connected, as you, if you follow the line here, connected to the uh, ignition switch. It goes from the battery uh, it is connected to a fuse line here at 15 amps. We don't want more than 50 amps going through the uh, ignition switch. So if you follow the line here, it will go into the ignition switch key here. So the switch has four terminals. You have the battery to plug it in there. You have accessory for your lighting and so forth. And then you have the ignition. From the switch, you connect your ignition terminal to a safety switch because again not unless your vehicle is put on park your vehicle will not start it's for safety so this way the transmission gear is not connected so when you start your vehicle your vehicle won't jump and hit somebody or hit something in front of it so it has to be on park if it's on drive it's open if it's on park then it is closed meaning that it is connected so if you follow the line here from the safety switch, the safety switch is connected to the relay. The relay is, uh, is wired like so. Here I have a, a diagram. So in a typical relay, the terminals are numbered. You have 86 here, which you connect the positive line to, and then the negative to ground, but it'll work either way. The two terminals up here, you have 87, and then you have 30. 30 is where the power will come from, and once it is electrified, the top part here will come down here to meet the bottom part, 87. 
87 then will allow electricity to flow to the load. So let's take a look at, see how I did it here. Let's take this out. You got battery from here. It's gonna go through here. It's gonna go through the fuse. It's gonna go through the positive terminals. It's gonna come out from the ignition wire. Electricity can still come through and it's going to travel through here. Number 86 is going to excite the solenoid here and then it's going to travel back to ground or to the negative terminal. So that is one complete electrical path, assuming the switch is on. What happens next once this is excited, right? On the key switch, you're also connected to the starter terminals. So once you turn the ignition key on, the electrical contact within here is then connected to the starter terminal. So the starter terminal is connected to number 30. Okay, the top part here. Once the bottom part is excited, when there's electricity going through, it will attract the top part here to the bottom part. Once these two touch each other, it will provide the electrical path from here to engage the solenoid. So the small wire now has electricity to also excite the solenoid here. It's like a, a bigger relay. So this is where it gets interesting. As I mentioned earlier, the starter has a number of crucial components to make it work. One of it is a solenoid here. It's just like a big relay, right? The solenoid here, as you can see, it's way smaller than the electric motor at the bottom. But the solenoid has the same principle as the relay here. When it gets electricity from the small wire, it's gonna energize the coil in here. The coils will produce magnetic fields that will attract a metal plunger or a metal piston from the front part here to the back part. Here's the solenoid. There's a metal plunger right in there like so. When you provide electricity to this small wire, it will electrify the coil. The coil then produces a tremendous amount of magnetic fields. The magnets then will attract the metal piece here backward like so. So the bottom piece here of the metal plunger or the piston has a metal plate. The metal plate here will push against the metal plate of this wire, which then allow electricity to go from this wire to the electric motor itself. So once this is pushed back, it provides the electrical path so that electricity can go to the uh, electric motor and spins the motor, does its work, and then come out to ground. Ground is connected to the metal frame of the electric motor. Now, in the real vehicle, the ground is connected to the chassis, the metal frame of the vehicle. The negative terminal line will not connect directly to the motor like this, right? But it's to a chassis, which then somewhere along the line gets connected to the negative terminal. You saw earlier when I start the engine, this thing comes out like that, right? To engage the teeth of the flywheel. When you get the signal from this line, as you saw in the whole process, when I turn on the engine, the plunger retracted backward like so. Connected to the plunger here is a lever. This lever here is connected to the shaft of the electric motor. When the piston is pulled back, just imagine, when it pulls back, it pushes the bottom part, which is connected to the shaft, outward. Right, so when I turn on the engine, it's going to cause the shaft to lurch out like so to engage the flywheel. So once the ignition switch goes back to its original place, there's no more electricity coming through here. There's a spring here that will force the piston here to go back to its position. And once it goes back to its position, the shaft here detracts as well and disengage itself from the flywheel. So that is the gist of the starting system to enable to control the starter using a small amount of energy to allow the bigger current, the bigger power to control the starter motor. You don't want to connect 125 amps or 400 or more amps to your ignition switch. That could be really dangerous if there's a spark or an arc. It could actually cause fire to the vehicle. Okay, so you want all the arcs, all the sparks to happen inside here where it's contained. And that's why a relay is used. Uh, to make that powerful connection to the to the starter. So with that, I'm going to turn the starter on so you get to see how this whole thing works. The battery is now connected. Positive line is connected to the starter solenoid here. The signal line here come from the positive line here. This is connected in parallel. Uh, go through the fuse, come all the way here, 
to the power terminal and then we'll come out from the ignition switch to the safety gear. Once I have it parked in neutral, then the circuit is closed. It's going to allow the relay here to be electrified to get the coil going. Once the coil here is energized, it will allow pin number 30, which is on top of the relay, to get electricity for the starter. So when I turn on the switch here, the starter contact is connected to the power line and then it will allow electricity to go through, make contact with number 87, the bottom plate of the relay to travel through the signal switch. The signal switch then electrified the solenoid here. Once the back plate of the solenoid made contact with the positive terminal line here, electricity then will flow down to the electric motor. The electric motor will then can do its work by turning the shaft and spin the pinion gear here at the, at the end, which then made contact with the flywheel uh, to get the engine to combust. So with that, I'm going to turn it on. So I'm going to put this on park. Now, even if it's on park, it won't start unless you turn on the ignition, the starter switch. So pay attention to the, uh, here, it's going to come out temporary and then disengage. Boom. With that, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you have a better understanding of the ignition system and what happened electrically behind the scene after you turn on your ignition. And uh, also I hope this video will give you a, a better idea of the various components that could possibly go wrong when your engine is not starting, right? So again, it's just not, it's not just a starter, it's not just the battery, it might be the relay, it might be the different wiring components. Uh, that you might want to investigate to get your vehicle starting again. So thank you again I really appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks